everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to go over how to study for pharmacology. Pharmacology is one of those classes that us health science majors cannot bypass and it's known for having a tough reputation because you have to know a lot of material in a short amount of time. There's a lot of drugs covered, a lot of side effects, so it can be overwhelming. In this video, I'm going to go over the common mistakes that pharmacology students make when approaching the class and give you some tips and tricks on how to study and ace pharmacology. So let's get started. First, let's talk about those common mistakes. First, a lot of students have issues with developing a study method. They get really overwhelmed because in most pharmacology classes, you'll cover material in your lecture class for about three weeks and then you'll have an exam. And on that exam, you'll be covering up to five to eight chapters and that is a lot of material, so it's very overwhelming. And you wonder, how do I even begin to study? Next, a lot of people have issues learning what material to study. They question, should I read every chapter word by word? And some of these chapters are like 100 to 200 pages and you'll spend a lot of time reading. Or do you just memorize the PowerPoints that your teachers give out? So a lot of conflicting things and you want to know how to actually target and tackle this material. Next. People try to memorize individual drug names instead of the group based on its prefix or suffix. And doing this, learning how to memorize based on prefix and suffixes and classes can save you a lot of time and help you understand this material. Next, last but not least, Sometimes, depending on how you're juggling everything, some students tend to cram. And pharmacology is just one of those classes it's really hard to cram for because like I said, there's a lot of material you have to know. So if your test is in two days and two days before the exam is the first time you've looked at the material, it can be really hard to actually understand and digest that material. So here in a second, I want to go over these tips and tricks to help you ace pharmacology that you can make your own and help you either increase your grade or get through the class. Okay, now let's go over those study strategies. Number one, very important, you want to learn drug prefixes and suffixes of the generic name, not the brand name, but the generic name, rather than trying to memorize individual drug names. Because each group of drugs usually will have very similar endings or the beginnings, the prefix which is the beginning and the suffix which is the ending. And let me show you an example. Okay, there's cardiac meds known as beta blockers. You have beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors. And they all usually have the same each category has the same suffixes. For instance, let's look at the beta blockers. There's a lot of beta blockers, so I just picked three. But you have metoprolol, atenolol, and propanolol. Notice at the end, the suffix is O-L-O-L. -L. And these share the common side effects, which are slow heart rate, cold, um, hands or feet, or tiredness. So say you have a test question on pharmacology that says, you have a patient that comes into the clinic and they report feeling tired, they have cold hands and feet, and whenever they check their pulse, their pulse is about 4950. And you look at the patient's medications and this is what the patient's taking and it gives you a whole list of medications. And your choices will be A, B, C, or D. Which medication do you suspect that the patient is taking that is causing these symptoms? And you would know based on memorizing the O-L-O-L -L suffix of beta blockers that this group of drugs can cause these side effects. So what this does is it just really helps you take a whole bunch of group of drug names and memorize the suffix or prefix to apply to side effects and how they work on the body, the pharmacokinesis. So very helpful tool. Next, make flashcards. This is one of the best ways to study for pharmacology. People who tend to do the best in this class who get an A make flashcards. So 
How you can do this, you can either make them yourself, you can buy an index card, you can get on Microsoft Word, create columns and tables and just fold the piece of paper together if you want to be save money so you don't have to buy index cards. You can do this many different ways. Or you can go and buy flashcards. There's companies like Kaplan that make individual flashcards. It comes in like a box and you can review those if you want to do that. But I really recommend that you actually create these flashcards yourself. And the reason why is because whenever you're looking through your book or you're looking through your class notes and you're having to create the flashcard yourself, you're actually having to write out the side effects, how it works on the body, its definitions, and then you're having to flip the card over and write the drug name and things like that. So not only are you going to be reviewing that flashcard, but you're also learning by having to actually process by your brain and your hand, you're having to write everything out. So that's another way of learning to help you. And another way is to actually, whenever you're creating these, you start creating these flashcards after each lecture class instead of creating them like the day or two before the exam. Because as we discussed at the beginning of the video, pharmacology covers a lot of material and you don't want to be stuck two days before the exam creating flashcards because that's not, not going to give you enough time to actually study those flashcards. So I recommend after each lecture class that you go home later that day and you make flashcards based on what your professor covered in the course and what correlated in the chapters and just make those flashcards. Then go over each flashcard individually, say them out loud, repeat them through rote memorization so you can remember that. Because studies have shown that what we learn and process in class, that if we don't review that that same day, that we're gonna forget 70 to 80% of that material. So you wanna do that to help you not do that. And it's a good idea that you carry these flashcards that you make around with you. Say you're waiting at a doctor's office or you're just lounging around the house or you have nothing else to do or you're waiting outside of a classroom for your other lecture class to start, you can just get out your flashcards and just start reviewing them because they're so easy to carry around and that's just easy access time to study. And have people quiz you, hand them to your friend, hand them to your boyfriend's spouse and say, hey, go over these flashcards with me and quiz me. That's another easy way that someone can help actually quiz you. And there's actually a website called studystack.com that you can go to. It has um, where it can actually create flashcards for you if you wanted that. Or they have a pharmacology section where a lot of people have uploaded flashcards that you can access for free and use those. But I really recommend that creating flashcards to help you study in pharmacology is a great tool. Now let's look at some other study strategies. Okay, next, another thing you want to do is you'll want to get a drug guide. This is like a little pocket drug guide that has taken all the major drugs that you're ever going to have to know and put it in a great, it's sort of like a dictionary and encyclopedia type deal, but it's a handheld that you can put in your pocket. And most professors will recommend what type of drug guide you'll go, should go with. So go by their recommendation. And this is just super handy because like I said, it's set up like a dictionary and say you were making your flash card for digoxin and you're not familiar with what it is. So you look it up and you're creating your flashcard, it will, right there, it'll have the side effects, nursing interventions, the pharmacokinesis, and everything literally right there for you. You can write all that on your flashcard, flip it over, write digoxin, and you're ready to go. Instead of having your lecture book, which this stuff will be scattered throughout, you'll have this section that'll be talking about side effects. Then you'll have this section that'll be talking about pharmacokinesis and things like that. And you'll be spending a lot of time going back and forth, but the drug guide will help just simplify things for you. So I really recommend you invest in one of those. Next, Create fun mnemonics and illustrations. This is so important, especially whenever you're in a section of drugs that maybe don't share the same prefixes or suffixes because some drugs don't have the same prefixes or suffixes and you're in a troubled area. For instance, I always had trouble remembering how beta one and beta two drugs worked on the body. And one time I found this great illustration that said, and it was like a picture of a heart, and it said beta one. 
for the heart. Beta 1 works on the heart and it's only one organ. Then beta 2, it showed a picture of two lungs. So beta 2 works on the lungs. And just seeing that imagery helps me remember it finally. And also, if you're not good at creating mnemonic, Google and Pinterest are really great because they have free resources for you to use that other people have just so graciously put on there for you to help you remember. So really recommend that can help go a long way in remembering just difficult things that maybe you're just having trouble to understand. Next, teaching others. This is so important, even though it sounds so simple and it's like, well, how in the world would that work? But teaching others, it really does work because whenever you actually are going to teach a friend or even say you don't have anyone to teach, it's just yourself. Whenever you actually have to speak and formulate sentences and talk, your brain is processing that and understanding that. And it's just sinking in more than if you were just looking at it, reading it silently because your brain is processing that. You're actually having to verbalize that with your vocal cords and your brain is having to figure out the correct words you want to use. So teaching others really helps. And like I said, if you don't have someone to teach, just review um, side effects and say those side effects over and over and explain how it works on the body and what drug groups are part of that. It's a really good way to help understand this material. And next, you'll want to get a study guide. This really goes a long way. There's a lot of study guides out there, so you want to pick the best one you can. I really recommend whenever you're looking at study guides, you can go to Amazon.com and look at the reviews, see what other students are saying. But what study guides do is that they help break down the material in your chapters into easier terms without all the fancy lingo and things like that. And a lot of these study guides will have great um, mnemonics in them, great illustrations, great little study aids to help you memorize this material because they know it's hard and they know that other people have had trouble with it. And a lot of them will come with test questions that you may see that are similar on your exam that your professor gives you. One just off the top of my head that I recommend, it's called Made Easy Pharmacology. It's a great um, little study guide to help complement your book. And sometimes some lecture books have a study guide to go along with that. But that's just an extra little thing that will condense the material down, help you whenever you're making flashcards, and just points out to you the most important material to study. And I want to end with this. Do not give up. Pharmacology is a tough course has a lot of material in it and it has a lot of things that you have to memorize. So if you didn't do good on the first test or maybe you're struggling right now, you have no idea what to do, don't give up. Take those study strategies that I gave you, pick one, pick two, make them your own and try the hardest. A lot of people have trouble with this class, but you can do it and you can ace it. And thank you so much for watching this video. And please check out our other teaching tutorials and our other videos on how to study for other classes in nursing school. And thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.